I'm here with Katie Martin. She lives in San Antonio. We got connected through Tim Kaufman, and she's lost 45 pounds. Has a great story. And so, Katie, first off, just thanks for uh, for the time, and maybe you could just start off with where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I was uh, born in Illinois. Uh, went to college in Colorado. Met my husband there, and then uh, we moved to Texas. And I think I, you know. Uh, Tim kind of caught me a little bit up on your story, but it sounded like, you know, your your quote unquote struggle with with your weight kind of went really far back, all the way till you were like eight or ten years old. Do you mind kind of um, starting there and kind of what life was like and and what happened to to kind of start you on this path? Yes, yes. Um, weight has always been an issue for me. Um, I recognized um, around eight to ten years old. Um, uh, significant changes were happening in my life. My parents divorced. Um, I had a cyst on my leg. Um, so that kept me out of athletics for years. Um, so there were a lot of things that, um, caused me, I guess, to make some real bad health choices as a child. Um, I was born a chubbier baby to begin with. <laughs> so it just kind of seemed to be, uh, you know, almost my lot in life, um, to struggle with my weight. Um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I'd have a growth spur or something like that, or I would lay off junk food for a while and I'd lose some weight, but it was a constant battle through, you know, up until adolescence and all the way into adulthood, um, for various reasons, various challenges in my life. Um, it took, it took until more recently before I actually learned what good healthy habits were. So what were those, what were those bad and healthy habits that you developed as a kid? I mean, what did food look like for you when you were growing up? I know that one of my, um, I, I think one of my coping mechanisms for my parents' divorce was that I would take my, my allowance and then I went down, um, down the street to the local corner store and would just spend it on candy. And so it was just a lot of junk food. Um, uh, there wasn't as much supervision, you know, and so my dad was, uh, we lived with my dad and my dad would go to work and he's like, okay, what do you guys want for McDonald's on my way home? And, or, you know, let's throw something out of a box and just, you know, mac and cheese or something. So it was a lot of processed foods, a lot of fast food takeout, things like that. Um, and then it was kind of, well, you came home from school and there's nobody there. So it's have as much snacks as you want, you know, and it was always junk food, sugar, sugar sweets and things like that. And so I, I gained a lot of weight really fast. <laughs> um, and, and then my mom even admitted that she goes, I never really learned how to cook. Um, and so we did a lot of, you know, hamburger helper meals. Um, and so she has kind of a few casseroles that always was hamburger and then, you know, three seasonings and that was about it. Um, and so I never, I learned how to bake, but never to cook an actual meal. <laughs> so I knew how to make sweet treats and cakes and things like that. Um, so yeah, we didn't eat a lot of vegetables. Uh, we grew up in corn country, so we had corn and we had steak and potatoes, but, um, I didn't know what squash was. I didn't know <laughs> what most of the vegetables in the grocery store actually were, let alone how to cook them or prepare them or what they did for my body. And I think as a kid, even you said that, you know, anxiety and depression really were a struggle for you. Would you mind talking about that and kind of, you know, what age range even that was? I think it built up over time and it took until high school till I, or college before I recognized what was going on. Um, as a kid, I became very overweight really fast. So, you know, you get criticized and picked on and bullied. Um, I couldn't participate in athletics because of the cyst on my leg. Um, and so I, you know, it continued to be a weight problem. I couldn't participate with the other kids. So there were social issues there. Um, and then into junior high, you know, you get picked on a lot. Um, and finally in high school with stresses and things like that about where I'm going for college and my grades, um, I started to have more of that anxiety, that depression, um, going on in high school. Um, you know, you have social things where, you know, kids are laughing at you or you don't have your, you know, your friendships are questionable and your grades. Um, you know, the moment I get a bad grade, every, my whole life ended. <laughs> it's just like, everything seemed very extreme. Um, I have a feeling that my hormones were out of balance um, um, because I was having some issues and um, they go to the doctor and their solution was birth control pills. So here I am, a young adolescent teen, and their only solution was put you on medication because uh, there has to be something wrong with you. 
So they never dealt with possibly the root cause of why I might be having some of these issues. Um, and so once I got into college, I started to um, get additional support. And that's when um, I found out that I was kind of more diagnosed anxiety, depression. I was having test anxieties, panic attacks and things when I would take a test. Um, and, and so they would give me, you know, um, extended time to finish an exam just because the pressure was stressing me out. Um, I'd go into social situations and I'd have to leave because I would be stressed out, um, and insecure and things like that. So then I ended up on, uh, antidepressant medication, anti-anxiety depressant, uh, medications, um, in college, um, which helped a little bit. Um, but it just, it just felt like things were just getting, things weren't actually getting better. Um, because what I know now is that we were never addressing the, the root cause of, of those problems. And, and what was your food and your, and your health and your weight like as you got into college? Was it, was it just a continuation and, and were you just basically maintaining or was it getting progressively worse? Were you getting heavier, uh, as you were kind of making it through that time? My, my weight has always been a roller coaster ride. Because um, I thought as long as I got off junk food that I'd be okay. And usually, you know, if there was a dance or something at school, I'd get off of, of sweets and I'd lose 10 pounds and, and be a little bit better. Um, or I'd go through a growth spurt and lose some weight. Um, I did the, the typical freshman 15, which was actually freshman 20, <laughs> um, when I went away to college. So I just kept gaining more weight. Um, you know, in high school, I think about my senior year, junior, senior year, I was getting involved in track and running my junior year and I got into horses my senior year. So I was staying active, lost the weight, went off to college, started eating bad foods again or more, you know, less exercise and gained it all back. So it was really a back and forth. I'd get a little exercise, lose some weight, and then I'd have a stressful semester. I'd eat a lot of poor foods and I'd gain it all back. And so it, it just seemed like it was constantly back and forth. Um, all the way up into adulthood. Um, I know when, by the time I graduated um, college, I had about 20 extra pounds than where I'd like to be. Um, and so I had started picking up running again. Uh, it was the only thing I knew um, to do. Um, and then I got married and we started, we got a deep fryer and we were all, you know, and so on it came, you know, I gained something like 50 pounds after I got married. Um, you know, my husband would, would um, show he loved me by bringing me home a Snickers bar or something. <laughs> He's like, oh, look, I got you something. And I'm like, thanks, but you're making me fat, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it took us a while to, to, um, to figure out that, that there are other ways to say I love you <laughs> than through our food. Um, so, yeah, even in our first year of marriage, we just both gained a lot of weight and realized this is not a good path to be on. <laughs> Yeah, and did y'all, you know, as you're getting married, discovering this new life together, getting Snicker bars, did y'all <laughs> ever have any conversations about, you know, any serious conversations about the, the you know, weight or just general health uh, concerns? Of course, we, we were always aware of the weight. Um, and we started all sorts of diets. You know, we'd try to walk together or something like that. Um, we would try, um, you know, the all carb diet or we try, you know, the Atkins and, you know, we, we kept trying all these different extremes. Oh, we heard this one works. And so we'd buy all the products and the shakes and the bars and, and everything like that. And we'd lose 10 pounds or something like that. And, and it was nothing we could maintain. It seemed unbalanced and unrealistic and we'd gain it all back and then some. Um, so we knew it was happening. We didn't like it, but it just kept happening. <laughs> and where were you at with anxiety, depression, and your other kind of health concerns at this point? Um, it, it was pretty bad. I mean, my husband still talks to this day about um, what a huge difference he sees now than from our first year. Um, he goes, I w he, he remembers moments where I had to make a phone call and I would just be frozen on the floor. Um, I couldn't because I, it was like a chess game in my mind. I had to think through every possible scenario before I could even pick up a phone. <laughs> um, it was just that, that anxiety had gotten so bad um, that just applying for a job was near impossible. Um, because fresh out of college, I didn't have a job. I couldn't get work. Um, they wouldn't even hire me at Subway because they said I was overqualified. 
because I had a bachelor's degree. So I couldn't get work, um, which I think just added to the depression um, of I can't make any money. Um, you know, uh, so that was a very stressful time. I think, you know, getting out of college, not having work, having the anxiety on top of that, and then newly married, not being able to pay bills. We were in a lot of debt, you know. Um, and then, of course, that forces you to eat things that, you know, ramen noodles because we can't even afford things at the grocery store. What did y'all's diet as newlyweds look like? Horrible. It was horrible. Um, it was literally like ramen noodles and macaroni and cheese. Um, processed foods we felt was the cheapest thing we could get. Um, or, you know, maybe McDonald's or something off the 99 cent menu. <laughs> Um, it was not good at all. Um, but I didn't, I only knew how to cook maybe five things out of a box. <laughs> so I brought that to the table. I didn't know anything about cooking. Um, and he didn't really know either. <laughs> so it, it was not pretty. <laughs> wow, yeah. And I think I, I heard that there was some point at which you had a, uh, a health scare with your gallbladder. Would you mind sharing that? And, and also kind of give a little bit of a reference to where that, you know, what, what point in marriage or life that happened? Uh, we were um, we were living in Colorado for about a year, um, and then we decided to move to Texas, which is where he's from. Um, and in that transition, again, we were eating a lot of deep fried foods. Um, we had uh, moved to a place where um, we didn't have an actual kitchen at all. We didn't have electricity, um, and so uh, we were trying to save money and 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 whatnot. And it ended up costing us more because um, we actually were eating McDonald's three times a day. It was the only place between the work and our home. And it, it, so high amounts of fat were being consumed. And then we, we moved to Texas and he introduced me into Mexican food. <laughs> so we started eating a lot of enchiladas and <laughs> more things that are very heavy in, in oils and fats. And um, it was during that move right before and right after um, I thought maybe I was pregnant because I was nauseous a lot. I felt really sick to my stomach and I thought, oh, that's weird. Um, and so when we moved, um, shortly after we moved, um, I was so sick that I was on the couch and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I just feel, I'm like, is it food poisoning? You know, what's going on? And, uh, so we went to the doctor and he goes, your gallbladder is spasming from the high amounts of fat that you're intaking. Um, and they thought they were gonna have to remove it completely. And he goes, it looks like if you'll lay off the fat that it'll calm down and, and you may be okay. But if you keep up with the enchiladas, you're going to be right back in here having your gallbladder removed. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that's a sign that, you know, maybe my weight isn't just a, uh, uh, a physical thing. It's something more, more serious that I need to be looking at taking it more seriously about losing the weight and, and looking at what I'm eating. And what was your response to that? What did you, you know, what did you do? Did you go home and eat an enchilada or did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I did take it seriously because I, I, I don't, I've had surgeries as a kid. I had my, um, uh, my cyst on my leg. Um, so I've had, I've been put down for that put down, <laughs> but I've been put asleep to that. I, I had, um, tubes in my ears twice where they had to um, put me to sleep um, for surgery. And I just don't like it. <laughs> I don't like going to doctors. I don't like being on medicine. I don't like having surgery. So that was not something I wanted to do. I didn't want them to start removing parts of my body. I feel like they were there for a reason. <laughs> um, and so, no, I took it seriously. It was already something we knew we needed to work harder on. Um, and so, yeah, we laid off the, the enchiladas. Um, but I still don't think I really knew what to do about it. I knew that we needed to lay off fast foods and high fat foods, but I really didn't know what to replace it with. Um, so we, we did cut back on those things. I tried to make some better choices. I can't even remember what I was eating at the time. Um, but it did help. It, it definitely decreased um, the gallbladder problems I was having. Um, I think they also gave me some medicine, of course, um, that would help with the, with the spasms and get it to kind of calm down for a while. So I think that that kind of gave me a, a, a false sense of it was getting better. <laughs> um, I think the medication helped with that. Um, but we, we did start to, our, I guess, our journey about learning about what we were eating. Um, I think it caused us to start taking a, a closer look at, at the food. Um, and so that I think that 
we slowly started making changes. As we learned things, we would change things. Um, but nothing too drastic, I think, was made. Just kind of reduce your fat and keep going. <laughs> okay. And then yeah. um, did you have any, you know, did you have a point? Because obviously at some point things change for you. Um, I know you said that kind of in a way was almost a starting point. What was there a moment or was there a period of time that you decided, you know, like, I really got to take a serious look at this. I think I, I think I saw that, you know, or in a previous interview, you said that, you know, you got married in 2003, but it really took until 2013, 10 years later for you to really make some lifestyle changes. So what did that look like? Um, you know, where did that kind of switch come in? Well, I know that the, the, obviously I, I never wanted to be overweight. I mean, who does really? Um, and I know that the gallbladder was, was an issue. So that was in my mind. Um, when we got married, you know, I was on all this medication and they kept saying, um, well, you know, if, if you get pregnant, you have to get off this medicine or you won't be able to breastfeed or, you know, all these things that I'm thinking, okay, then there's something wrong with my body. If I can't, carry a healthy pregnancy or feed my child because I'm on all these medic medications. So, um, I mean, already in that first year I was transitioning off of the anxiety and depression medicine. Um, I just, I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to live off of medicine. Um, I mean, at some point they put me on, um, allergy medicine and they're like, well, you're going to take this the rest of your life too. And so through those years I kept going, I don't want to live on medicine. I don't want to just keep adding, you know, drugs after drugs. Um, so we were learning, we were changing out, you know, sweeteners as we went, we were making small changes as we went. And then, um, um, as a teacher, I found that I was really busy and stressful during the school year. And then the summers would hit and I had nothing to do. And that idleness almost, um, uh, was worse for me because it actually caused me to go into a depression state where I was like beating myself up. I should be exercising, but I'm not. Um, I should be losing my weight during the summer, but I'm not. And, and finally, um, one summer I was watching documentaries and I came across forks over knives and, um, I was watching some other documentaries too about food and, um, and there was something very appealing to seeing all of the, the colorful fruits and vegetables. And they basically said, it's more about what you can eat and what you're getting into your body than, than what you can't eat and what you're, you're always trying to tell yourself diet, you know, get off of these things. And it, it seemed to just click and make sense that I need to focus on what's good for my body. Um, and so it was, it was really watching those documentaries that made that click that, and they said, somebody said, give it two weeks and you're going to feel a noticeable difference. In four weeks, you're going to see an even bigger change. So two to four weeks. Um, and that's how much time I had before I went back to work. So I was like, okay, in two weeks, I'll be back in training. And in four, I'll have students full time. I've got two to four weeks to see if I can make a change in my life. Um, and somebody had said that by changing their diet in two weeks, they got out of their depression. And that's exactly what I needed. I didn't have motivation to get off the couch and exercise or anything like that. And I'm like, food, I can change. I can't exercise, but I can eat differently. Um, and so that's when I, I bought the book. I read it in like one night. <laughs> I spent days at the store reading labels and getting familiar with, with um, what to look for in our food and um, looking at recipes and things like that. Um, and that was, oh, I wish I could remember the year. It's been two, three years now. Um, it's kind of a blur now. <laughs> um, and so that summer is what was that pivotal turning point for me. Um, and I, I remember I had stopped weighing myself. And at that point, I was like, okay, now that I'm making a significant change, I'm going to see what it is on the scale. And it was at 208 at that point. Um, I know when I first moved to Texas um, is when I got over 200 pounds. And that's when I stopped weighing myself. And so at that point, with all my ups and downs, I was at 208 when I started um, making that conscious change in my diet. Wow. And so, you know, you watch this. I think you said earlier you didn't even know what a squash was, much less how to, <laughs> how to cook it. So what did, those, what did those first baby steps look like for you? You know, did, 
did you go out that day and and cook something new that night or you know what was what did the transition kind of look like and it also sounded like you had a small window that you were really trying to go pretty hard at um i i started um luckily the the forks over knives and the the engine two documentaries were really good about how to um prepare your kitchen to be successful so we immediately started throwing out everything um that that was bad. Um, the processed foods, um, the animal products, um, you know, anything that we felt was going to keep me away from being successful, um, that didn't meet the guidelines. We were reading all the labels, all the canned foods, you know, we donated it. Um, and so we said, okay, clean out the kitchen, start fresh, you know, and then restock it. And so, um, that's why I spent, you know, probably several days during that first week reading labels, bringing them in and then trying out recipes. So that's pretty much all I spent my time on for the rest of the summer was um, trying out recipes and getting comfortable in the kitchen and, and with what kinds of foods I should be eating um, so that I could be successful once I started the school year and got really busy again. <laughs> now you said you kept referring to we, what was, uh, what was your husband's response in all of this? Was he pretty warm to the idea or did you kind of have to drag him along? Um, he agreed that it made sense. Uh, when we heard it, we're like, well, it just makes sense that, you know, it's about feeding that the nutrient, you know, getting the nutrients into your body rather than everything else is don't eat this or don't eat that. And this was, here's where you're most you know, your nutrient dense foods are fuel your body with what it needs to, to heal itself and to energize itself. So he's like, yeah, that makes sense. Go for it. <laughs> it wasn't, let's do it. It's go for it, you know, make it happen. He was very encouraging towards me taking those steps. Um, he wasn't so much about wanting to sit down and watch the videos or learn how to read labels himself. So as long as I cooked it, he was all for eating it. Um, but then, you know, if I wasn't around, he'd go get whatever, <laughs> um, whatever he wanted to eat. He was, he just wasn't quite ready to make a full on transition. Um, but he always, he always, um, he, you know, if I will model and set the example and he can see that it'll happen, a lot of times he'll get on board with it. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. Uh, he saw the changes in me and then went, okay, see, this really does work. Um, let me, I, I need to do that more. Um, so he's, he's more kind of letting me take the reins on it and then he'll just kind of follow suit as much as possible. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you must've been in a place where you were really just ready to receive it. Cause I also saw, you know, you mentioned that you hated going to the grocery store so much that your reward for going to the grocery store was allowing yourself to eat a donut after. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so it sounds to me, you know, I'm just imagining that's a pretty stark change from, you know, donut reward to I'm throwing everything out. I'm going to learn how to cook something. You know, what do you what do you think gave you? I mean, was it just kind of a perfect storm of things that led you to a point to where you were really ready to make that that change? You know, because I know for a lot of people, they yeah. they go to the doctor and they have this this horrible, you know, something happen or somebody passes away or they kind of hit rock bottom where for you, it just sort of sounds like there was a lot of, um, kind of situational things that happen all simultaneously. that just put you in a place where you were ready to like really kind of, you know? Yeah. I think it, for the first time it made sense. You know, I've seen so many diets, I've tried so many things and you know, like I said, everything was about don't eat this, you know, it's, it's very extreme and I never felt like it was healthy for my body. I always felt like something was missing. And for the first time, this was, this was about eating in abundance. Um, it wasn't about starving yourself. It was about, you know, it was almost a challenge or a goal to say, can you eat the rainbow today? You know, and it's like, wow, you look at all that produce and it looks so appetizing. Um, it, I guess it just felt like more of a challenge. And I knew that every step I was making was actually going to make my body healthier. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. It's just, I mean, if you go on a carb diet and you're eating all these fancy shakes and these, these bars and things like that, and, it, and it's all, it's all still processed or, you know, it just felt like, well, but I'm not eating. I don't know. 
it, something just looked right. It clicked. And I said, you know, I think this makes sense. Um, and I think the, the testimonies made a huge difference. Um, people weren't just saying they lost weight. They were healing diseases. They were getting out of depression. I saw um, the one person that really triggered me. Um, he went to some uh, camp where they were um, on plants for uh, a couple weeks. And he was, he was suicidal. Um, and he went, and in two weeks, he, he was full of energy, he was optimistic and happy again. He felt there was life and purpose and hope. And I was like, that's exactly it. And all because of his food. Like, it just blew my mind that food could do so much. And I think in the back of my mind, I knew it could, but I just didn't feel like I had enough information um, to make it happen. And I finally felt like I got that missing puzzle piece. Um, that, that made sense. And I thought I can do this. This makes sense. It will, it'll work. So you yourself had had, you know, a history with depression, anxiety, other physical things. Once you started getting to that two, four week, you know, and beyond points, what, what changes did you notice that you previously hadn't, you know, seen with your own body or your own health? I felt immediately, I didn't even know that my, my head was like in a fog, um, that I couldn't think straight. It just, I'd, I'd been living like that for so long. I didn't know the difference. And after I switched my diet, it literally like the flaw, the fog lifted. Um, the only other time I had that happen was, um, briefly when I started the antidepressant and anxiety medications. So it had the same effect, but it was food. I was no longer on those. I got off of those after the first year, um, because I just didn't want to be on them. Um, and so for finally, I felt that fog lift just by changing my diet. Um, and then my husband noticed, he goes, you're coming home from work and you're not sitting on the couch anymore. You're actually up in the kitchen cooking and you're able to sustain your energy level into the evening and then go to bed instead of just coming home and just crashing like I'm done for the day. So I think that my energy level and my ability to think clearly were, were two of the biggest changes I saw immediately. And then I think, you know, I, I heard you say somewhere that, that at some point along the way, you kind of had a bit of a hiccup or you had, you know, a bit of a stumble. Um, would you mind kind of talking about that? Maybe what led up to that and, and what that looked like? I started off the diet really um, 100% um, compliant, if you will. And, <laughs> um, and I was able to continue the weight loss through the school year. Um, I lost the, the majority of my weight during the, the first semester. Um, and then it kind of started to go downhill, um, in the middle of the school year, but I still continued to lose. Um, like when I first started, I was losing an average of three pounds a week. Um, yeah, two to four every single week. And then it got to the point where I was losing one to two pounds a week. Um, and it was certain things like, um, no longer ha putting in the time to make my lunch. So I would start to buy a pre-made salad or something like that, but it doesn't have a healthy salad dressing. So I would use the salad dressing or something and just try to use less of it. Um, or I would start to do a frozen meal that's vegan, but it's still not, you know, maybe it has too much oil and salt in it. Um, and so, but I was just trying to make the best decisions I could um, because I just, uh, I work too many hours. <laughs> I'm there late. I come home tired again. And I just stopped putting as much effort into my food and stopped making it as high a priority. Um, and so I continued the weight loss through the school year and I was able to kind of pick up those changes during the summer. But then it was the following school year that I was extremely stressed out. Um, I had a really rough group of kids. And at that point, it's I pretty much stopped focusing on myself and I was tired and stressed all the time. Um, so I was doing more, um, uh, picking up food on the way home because I didn't want to come home and cook. And that's very hard to do. It's very hard to find foods in restaurants that meet those guidelines. Um, and so that's when, um, it became kind of a sustaining and then slowly as those decisions started getting worse and worse, I started gaining some of that weight back. Um, and then I started beating myself up for it. I'm like, I can't believe all that hard work <laughs> and you just flushed it down the toilet, you know? Um, and that's when I finally went, you know what? 
Don't beat yourself up about it. Um, it's been a very stressful time and you know how to fix this. You know that in just two weeks you can turn this around. So get yourself through this difficult time and, and you can fix this. And so I got through that school year and the next summer I said, all right, that's done. Now let's get back on track. And I think that was a major, um, I needed that experience. I needed to know that it wasn't just a fad that, oh, well, you tried it, you failed, you're gaining the weight back, it's all over, it didn't work. No, I knew it worked, and I knew it did more than just weight loss. It, it healed my body, um, it, it, it changed the way I think, and I knew that it was good nutrition for my body, and it wasn't, it wasn't a short-term thing, it was the way I needed to live my life for the long haul. So even when you have a moment where things get rough, you just go right back to feeding your body the way you're supposed to in the end. Yeah, I think sometimes it's, uh, it's easy to think, you know, you fall off the wagon, it's a literal like fall off and, you know, all is lost kind of thing. But the reality is you've had so much gain and you've, you know, you've come so far even, you know, if at the moment you don't realize it that you know all you need is just really to just hop back on and it's really not mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal um and i think i think somewhere in there exercise became important to you or it you know it it became a real factor in all of this can you talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. um as i said before when i when i first started i didn't want to get up at all um and so food was the best choice for me um and even for the whole year that i lost weight i wasn't exercising um, now my job has me on my feet all day and walking a lot. So I'm sure that did help. Um, but I wasn't doing any intentional exercising, but as I started to lose the weight, I actually wanted to exercise again. I actually had that energy. So I would try to, to do more walking and things like that. I wanted to get into running, but I didn't quite, um, do very much of that yet. Um, and then this last summer when I was kind of getting re I, I'm, I think my, my years get all blurred together, but I think it was this last summer, um, cause I had the really stressful year last year and it was this last summer that I finally was like, okay, I'm getting back on track with my food, but now I've also recognized that exercise doesn't just help you lose weight. It's good for your body. <laughs> you need to, the blood circulation, you need that strengthening of your muscles for your, you know, your skeletal structure and everything like that. And so I had seen a lot of people be very successful with CrossFit. Um, and they did, they loved it. They actually liked going to the gym and I'm like, Ugh. I've never liked going to the gym. <laughs> um, and so I, I found a place that was right down the street from me and right on my way to work. And so I called them up and he goes, I'm starting a boot camp class for beginners. Um, and it starts tonight in an hour. You want to go? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I literally got dressed and went. Um, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> um, it was really intense, but a lot of fun. Um, it's, there's no workout that's ever the same. So it really keeps your, your, you know, engagement. Um, they're very goal oriented and very positive. Everybody there encourages you, um, which is not what I experienced growing up. Um, uh, growing up, it was in athletics. If you can't do it, you were put down, uh, you're picked last for gym class, you know, all that. And so I was really scared to do it. And it, that was quite the opposite experience than what I had. Um, and so I stuck to it, which, again, is not something I typically do with exercise. Um, and uh, I did a six-week boot camp going three times a week and ended up losing 12 inches overall on my body. Uh, legs, arms, waist uh, measurements was a total of 12 inches. Um, not understanding what that meant. They said that, that losing three or four, let alone five is a huge accomplishment. So losing 12 inches apparently was just mind blowing, um, in six weeks, two, two inches a week, basically. And I was like, awesome. Like, but the scale hardly moved. I think I lost five pounds in six weeks. Um, and so that's when I realized the scale wasn't everything. Um, it's how I was feeling and how my clothes fit that was making a huge difference. Um, so I loved it and I signed up for another six weeks <laughs> and lost another 12 inches. And at that point I started to see, um, more of the fat go off. The scale started dropping more. Um, but I actually, 
the clothes that I was wearing when I'd lost the 50 pounds, 50 to 55 pounds by nutrition, I gained a bunch of it back. And now with the exercise, I was, I was, um, actually about 20 pounds heavier than when I lost my first weight with nutrition, but wearing the same clothes. So I realized that it wasn't just the scale. It was my, how, how my clothes were fitting. That was more important. Does that make sense? So I got, I got down to about 150 before gained about 30 pounds or something like that back and then got down to about 170. Um, but was wearing the same clothes as I was when I was 150 because I was gaining so much in muscle. Yeah, no, I think sometimes the scale is easy for it to be our, you know, our best friend, our enemy, our, um, you know, gauge of how we're feeling today, of how we're doing, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. and it can be a an unhealthy relationship super quickly. And they, they're the ones that taught me, um, are you getting stronger? You know, um, they did a baseline test of what you're capable of. And then in six weeks, they did it again. And so the first time I did it, you know, they did a one minute time on like your push ups. And I could only do 14. And six weeks later, I did 42. <laughs> it was like 41, 42. So I mean, that was just in six weeks. So they're like, look at different numbers. Look at how much you're getting stronger. Um, it took me, I think, 12 minutes. Uh, and 12 and a half minutes to finish the workout. And after six weeks, it took me six minutes and 45 seconds. Um, so I almost cut my time in half. So they said, look at different numbers than the scale. You know, there's other things in life that other than your scale. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we need a redirection for what we, uh, for what we look to for success. Exactly. Um, so I think I, I heard you say where there was a moment where you were kind of discouraged and one of your, your trainers or coaches kind of gave you some encouragement that, that changed the way you kind of looked at things and the way you look at yourself. Would you mind sharing that story? It was our last workout before the test at the end of the six weeks and my first time going. And um, I was tired and it was one of those I'd already told myself, even when you're tired, just show up, you know, because um, I never... Even though I was I was committed to the workouts, I never wanted to go. I was waiting for that moment where I actually wanted to exercise. And it took about two months before I actually wanted to go to the gym. <laughs> so I was tired. I made myself go anyway. And it was a really, really tough workout. I looked at the board of what she had us doing. And um, I don't know if you know what burpees are, <laughs> but they're not fun. <laughs> and, um, and it was going to be a series of exercises that included uh, 20 burpees, but we had to do three rounds of all these exercises. And I had a panic attack. I literally saw that and I added up 60 burpees. And I was like, I can't do this there. I am not physically capable of doing that. And in my mind, I was ready to run for the door. I was like, I, if I can sneak out of here in any way, I will, I can't do this. And uh, she's like, okay, ready begin. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, how do I get out of this? <laughs> And she saw the panic in my face and she's like, what are you thinking? What's going on? Talk to me. And um, I said, I can't do this. This is not something that I'm capable of doing. And she goes, yes, you are. You're stronger than when you started. You can do this. And she goes, let's break it down. Let's do one thing at a time. And I was hyperventilating. It was so bad. I was about to cry. I was just really having a panic attack. Um, I was quite embarrassed, actually. <laughs> But um, she just talked me through it every step of the way. And she goes, five at a time. It's just five, you know. And so I get down, I do five. She goes, let's do five more. And she literally just five at a time, five more, five more. And she talked me through it. And all the other kids are done, or kids, all the other people were done. And I start panicking again. I'm like, here I am coming in last. I'm always coming in last. I didn't want to be that person. And, and instead, they just encouraged me. You've got this. Keep going you know, let's get down and do it with you. And they come and they do the burpees with me as a team. I mean, they were just nothing but encouraging. And the biggest thing she said was, you are not the same person you were before. You need to tell all those, those voices in your head that say you're not good enough, that you can't do it. All those people that say, fat Katie, you're just, you're just fat. Y you know, um, you need to tell them to buzz off and, and get out of your head and just, you can do this. You're not the same person you were before. Um, and that was huge. I, I, 
to this day, I can, I keep those words in my head. And when, um, you know, now, now it's been, that was the end of June when I started boot camp, and now it's um, December and I'm in full on CrossFit. And we've had moments where there's been some really tough workouts and it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't have panic attacks. I don't get scared of it. I just do five or 10 at a time and knock it out and go, you know what? I'm stronger. I'm not that person who I was. And it's all gone. Like those panics are gone. That anxiety with, with exercise is gone. Um, it, what she did in that moment made such a huge impact. Um, so I'm really really grateful for that moment. <laughs> um, I have to say though, that I was so embarrassed that I almost didn't want to come back. That was a Thursday and our last day was Saturday. And in most cases, when I have panic attacks like that, I would not return. I would quit. And I told myself, that's not the person I want to be. I don't want to be the quitter. I don't want people to see, um, my lowest moment. I want to show myself and everybody else that I can be better and that I am better. And that's when I came back for my final test and about, and just blew my score out of the water. And so I guess my encouragement for others is that, you know, don't quit on the low moments, you know, show up and, and find, find your improvement, find your gains, find something else to look at, to prove yourself wrong, um, that you really are capable of it. You know what I mean? That you are stronger. Um, and I needed that victory to, to, um, in my memory to overcome the, the, that bad moment that was so hard. Yeah. I think, I think we can never underestimate a small amount of encouragement, what that can do for somebody else. Uh, and, and the lasting effects of that, um, it, you know, it can, it can mean the world. What, what, you know, what, or has there been anything that's, that's changed for you that surprised you? You know, is there any element of your life that's different now than it was, you know, back pre-2013 that you just, you wouldn't have anticipated or you weren't expecting at the beginning of this? Whether it's, you know, socially, emotionally, in your professional life, in your married life, um, just, you know, for yourself individually, is there anything that's kind of surprised you during this whole process? Besides, besides knowing what a squash is? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I do agree that I'm surprised I eat the amount of vegetables that I eat today. Cause I never would have thought as a kid, um, you know, I, I was the picky eater that would not eat vegetables and now I love them. So yeah, it does surprise me to see me eat those things. But, um, I would say the most recent, um, uh, surprise that's been pleasant <laughs> is how I'm seeing this affect my job. Um, my job has always been really stressful to me and I've, I've been impressed in how I'm able to look at my students differently. Um, I've actually used, um, um, a lot of my challenges in my CrossFit because like I said, I was not athletic. I was always dealing with weight issues as a kid. Um, so it was a, a big insecurity. I was an academic person. So, you know, when they struggle with academics, I never really understood that because it always made sense to me. Um, but when it comes to athletics, that was my challenge. Um, and so now when I have students that are struggling, I relate my struggles in the gym to what they're doing in the classroom. Um, and it seems that the encouragement I've gotten from, from the gym, I'm now able to use in my classroom with my kids. Um, I feel like I'm a lot more patient. Um, uh, the clarity of mind, I'm a lot more patient with them. I don't um, feel like I'm going to lose my temper <laughs> with them. Um, so I definitely see that, you know, managing, you know, 20 or so six-year-olds, <laughs> um, having good nutrition and good exercise can make a huge difference in how you function and get through the day. That's awesome. Um, so where are you at now, you know, present day today with your anxiety, your depression, and maybe some of the other, you know, kind of medical, physical things that you had previously struggled with? Um, I got off of the anxiety, depression medication after, um, like my first year. Um, but it was always, um, a struggle. 
um, you know, spiritually, um, with counseling and things like that. Now, um, it's very rare that I have any moments. Um, usually I can tell when it's usually my, my life is getting out of balance. If I'm getting heavy stress or something like that. Um, and honestly, I gave myself the liberty to take a day off when, when it feels like the stress level is too high. I take a mental day. And I go hiking. <laughs> um, I get some fresh air, and it's you know instead of waiting till you get sick and going to a doctor, I I basically say you know what, my life is getting out of balance. I can feel the stress on my body. Um, why don't I prevent myself from getting sick and take a day and and give myself some healthy medicine? <laughs> Um, and I've done that a few times now. Um, and it really helped me get through my school year. Um, I'm not taking days off for being sick. I'm taking preventative days, um, and actually going hiking. Um, hope my boss doesn't watch this right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, I've learned how to basically give myself preventative medicine and, um, manage things before the stress gets to me. Um, and I've also, um, you know, I do a lot of self-talk, you know, um, what, what my coach did for me. Um, I don't let those negative words, um, um, come in, you know, and you just, you know, even if you have to write it on the wall, you know, I, I will actually track my progress on my wall and say, you know, here's my goals. Here's what I've accomplished. Um, if I ever get to a point where I'm feeling, um, low or that I haven't, um, you know, reached my goals, I'll actually start to go, what have you accomplished? What good things have you seen? Um, and, and you need to write it down, um, and remind yourself that you have made improvements, you are reaching goals, um, and, and just get rid of those negative thoughts. Um, maybe even watch a new documentary or something that will inspire you to keep going. Um, but be your own, um, inspiration and, and kind of speak life to yourself, um, to get past, that. So I, I feel like I've, I figured out kind of guess how to manage it so that it doesn't manage me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. And so speaking of goals, anything life or physically that you're, you're working towards now or you have on your horizon? Um, I've actually been inspired. Um, I saw some people running half marathons this weekend <laughs> and I'm like, you know, maybe I could start to do that. I saw five K's, 10 K's and, and I kind of thought that would be a fun new goal um, to, to start, I did tr track for a year in high school. So I thought about taking up maybe some, some races would be a fun way to do that. Um, I do have a kind of a long-term goal. I would love to hike the John Muir trail. Um, I love hiking. I love the mountains and that's about a three to four week hike. And so, um, that's one of my focuses too, is to get stronger and healthier so that one summer I can take off and go hike that. I think, yeah. And of course, just, I think in the gym, I'm seeing, I'm seeing myself, um, break barriers, do things that I haven't done before. So I, I have a lot of short term goals, um, physically to do with that. Um, that's awesome. Well, if yeah. you're looking for a half marathon to do, there's a bunch of us that are doing, uh, Leadville in June, Tim included and myself. Oh, wow. And so you're more than welcome to join us. <laughs> it's an open invitation, June 17th. Awesome. Um, so is there anything that you would say, you know, to somebody who's at the beginning of this journey, who's watching this and thinking, you know, I need, it's been a long time for me and I need to start thinking about myself and put myself first and my health and I'm ready to not, you know, feel like junk anymore. Are there any words of encouragement that you would give to that person to help them, you know, kind of get started on the journey? Yeah, I think that for one, putting yourself first is important. It's very easy. I know we were in ministry and and um, and spending a lot of time on others, and that's a good thing. I I am all for that. But there is a time when you need to put yourself as a priority, um, and two to four weeks can make a huge change. Whether you're adding exercise or you're changing your food, you can see a huge difference in a short period of time, um, and it's what your body is asking for. And if you'll give it that, um, you will see success. And I think some of these diets people try, they're not seeing the results fast enough. And so they get discouraged. And I, and, and the beauty is, is this one does give you results quickly because it's what your body's asking for. It's hungry for it. And if you'll just feed it the right things. And so with all that, there's hope, 
there is hope when you're feeling discouraged and you feel like you've tried everything and it's not working for you. Um, it can work for you. If, if you'll give it a few weeks of commitment, you will feel a huge difference. Um, it is possible and lots of people are doing it. Um, go out there and find the motivation. Listen to the people that are successful um, to block out the negative things that tell you you can't be successful. Um, it's worth it. It's worth it. That's awesome. And then, you know, if you could go back pre-2013 and have a conversation with that, that person, uh, you know, yourself, is there anything that you think you could say or any words of encouragement that you would give to that person that maybe would have uh, gotten you started in this journey a little sooner or maybe just words that that person needed to hear? You know, that's, that's interesting because I do think that the timing um, of everything was, was, um, was key. Um, I'm not sure if getting that information sooner would have made a difference um, or if it just happened to be, it just feel like everything clicked. Um, so yeah, I think that it, it would have been hard to tell myself it'll get better or anything like that. It's almost like I needed to come to that point in my life to be able to receive that information in that timing. Even my husband goes, you know what? I think you got that information exactly when you needed to. Um, so that, that's kind of tricky. There is hope, there is encouragement. Um, but you have to be in a right mindset to receive it, I think. Yeah. Um, well, and then lastly, where can people, you know, if they hear all this and they really connect with what you're saying, where can people connect with you or find out more? Um, I am on Facebook. Um, Katie Lane Martin. Lane is my maiden name. <laughs> um, and um, I, I actually am part of a, a McDougal Facebook page. Um, I, I honestly don't, I haven't read the books. I don't know the diet, so I don't throw my two cents on there. Um, but I know it is plant-based and, um, and there's a lot of good inspiration on there. A lot of people that are, um, in a similar, uh, path that I'm on. Uh, so I'm also on that page as well. Um, well, I'll include a link, um, to your Facebook page and Katie, thanks so much for the time and for the inspiration and I look forward to hearing about um, your half marathon and all the other <laughs> all the other uh, goals that you're working on. And like I said, feel free. You know, maybe we'll see you in Colorado as well. Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks again for everything, and have a great day. You too. All right, take care.